Hi guys, my name is Jana, and today I want to make a beading tutorial that is based on the double row bracelet that we just did. So I'm just taking that one step up. Uh, instead of doing two rows, we're going to do three rows, but this time for a ring. Uh, you need some round beads. Uh, the reason for that is because it's going to go on your finger and the round beads feel more comfortable than the bicones. But you can use bicones if you want that, uh, but it will not feel as uh, comfortable on your finger. After a while it's going to irritate uh, the, the pointy edges of the bicone. Uh, you do need some bicones though. I'm going to use uh, an AB in the middle and I'm going to surround it with my dark sapphire blue. So uh, you can do this of course in a bigger size if you want. You don't need the Swarovskis for this. You can uh, get check beads. Uh, they're much cheaper if you don't have that kind of money but I'm gonna do them with Swarovski so you also need nylon thread that is uh, 0, 0 0.0 I don't know if you can see that 0 0.20 millimeters this is uh, slightly thinner than the one we've been using so far but we need to go through the bead several times so you need something thinner but something that's still strong and then we're going to set up with four beads and these AB beads, these round beads, it's pretty hard to find the hole especially in the dark like what I'm beading now so bear with me, it's going to take a bit to get this done and the fourth bead, round bead, we're going to cross that I bet. Uh, by the way this is called a uh, right angle weave um, if you see tutorials with seed beads you will see them do it slightly differently because they use a needle but it's still the right angle weave it's one of the most used uh, techniques there is for making uh, jewelry okay we're gonna do one round bead on the right thread and then one bead on the left thread and we're going to cross that in another round bead and as I said the holes are pretty hard to find especially in the dark and this band-aid is annoying me more and more every day but we'll get through it okay now we got two I'm gonna do one more and you can do five too if you like big rings just do five one right left and now remember when we cross back to do the second line we had this and then we did one we did two on the left side and then we crossed in the bead on the right side because we're going to turn back now after three So we got our first three, now we're going to do, we got a top thread and a bottom thread, so we need two on the top thread, oops, one, two, and then we cross it. other thread okay we're gonna turn that around because we're gonna work our way from ourselves so there we got that now and then if you did the bracelet you know now that you need to go through the middle bead with your left thread and that your right thread is gonna get one bead and then you're gonna cross in another bead There. 
Now we got almost got two rows. And again, we're going into the bead that's in the middle with our left thread. Carefully pull that up. And now we need to turn again because I want another row. So I'm going to do the same as we did with the first row. I'm going to put one on the top. And now we are going to, as you can see, as you're working this, you can see you got one on the top. You already have one on the bottom. So now you need to cross your next one. Now you got two rows. So what we need is one on the top, one on the side, and cross back on the bottom there. So that's one, two. On the top. And then we're going to cross our threads. Now we got our third row. So we're going to turn it around again. And then we're going through the middle one with our left thread. Pull that through. And then we need one on the right thread. Okay, and now we need to do one more. So, in we go. And the last one we will cross on the top. So, that's one on the right side. And now we're going to cross the last one. And we're going to turn that around again. We're going to take our right thread, put the needle out of the way, pick up a bicone, right, left thread, pick up a bicone, and pick up a seat bead, and cross your threads in that seat bead. bicone again. Now we're going to pick up a bicone again on the right thread. And bicone on the left thread. And we're going to cross in the second round bead in the middle there. And if this is hard to do, just get out a needle, 
might be easier. And we're going to do the same thing again. Bike comb, right. Bike comb, left. Cross in seat bead. We're going to do that one more time. By cone right, by cone left, crossing a seed bead. Bike going right, bike going left, and now we're going to cross in that last round bead right there. Now we need to turn back to go into the middle one, but our threads are on the top, so we need to get the threads right here in that uh, round bead. So I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to put that on the back. I'm going to take my needle, and I'm starting with my right thread as I put that on the back. I'm going to go down or up actually to my left then down and one more to the left and that is coming out there and what I'm doing right now is called following the beaded path so instead of going straight across from here to here, I follow the beaded path. So this is also going to follow a beaded path. There's only one way. You can't go across, so to follow the beaded path you'll have to go up. In one, of course. To your left. And down. And then to the right. There. Now if you turn it around. We're going to work our way upwards. So here we go. 
Bicone on the right. Bicone on the left. Cross in a seed bead. And get the needle out of the way before I stick myself. There we go. And another bicone on the right. Bicone on the left. I'm going to go in that second round bead right there. So just fold that double so you have the space. Watch out, you don't go through any bicones. There, that's one. Now I want another color for the middle, so I got my ABs here, one on the, oop, one on the right, one on the left, take that seat bead, Awesome. Bike cone right. Bike cone left. And right side goes into the right side of the round bead. And it's easier to just take it on the side like that and just fold it double. There. And there. And now we got one in there and we're going to do a blue one again right and left and cross round there. Okay, and now we're on the top again, so we have the same issue. We need to go into that round. So, turning that on the back again. Getting my needle there, going up, going right. The other one, going up, going right,
going down. And going right. There, now we have our third one. Turn that around. And now we're going to do our last row. So pause me now. When you get to the top, I think you know how to do this. And I'll see you there. Okay, how does that look to you? Is that gorgeous or what? Um, this ring has a natural curve, which will automatically lay beautifully on your fingers. And I don't want to screw around with that, because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But um, we need a ring then now, so what we're going to do is we're going to tie this off, and we're going to get our needle for that. I'm going to go one down, one right, and since I don't want the knot to be on the side, I'm going to leave it right here, take the other thread, and go down. So that my threads meet up here. Now I'm going to triple knot. One. Two. Three. Actually, it's thin thread, so let's make that another knot on there, that's four times. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go in and up. Pull. And I'm going to take the other thread. And I'm going in, and I think that knot still needs to be pulled in, so I'm not going to do that now. Yank, yeah, there you go. And I'm going to go sideways. And then cut off these threads. And the next part. So that leaves us with the ring band. For this, I'm going to use fire line about an arm span wide. That's fire line. Let me show you that. Uh, 0 0.006, and that's 4LB size B crystal. Set that up on the needle. And I'm going to go into the middle round of one of the sides. Doesn't really matter what side because they all look the same. I'm gonna pull that through. I'm gonna put one, two, and I think I'll make my ring bend five wide. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna do another two for the side. I'm gonna go through there again. And then I'm gonna go through 2 plus 5, so that's 7. Which basically means that you're going to leave 2 on this side. Before I continue, I'm going to first take the other thread and go through all the seed beads to go around, 
and make sure that's nice and tight. first one again and this is my favorite stitch by the way it's called ladder stitch so we're going to turn it on the back gonna pick up a seed bead and we're going to go into the first of the five seed beads so don't go through any of the two that are on the side there seed bead that you just added. Pick up another seed bead, go into the second one, and then go into the one that you just added on your thread. So that's also the second one now on top. Pick up another one, go into the third one, and then back in there. And I'm going to pick up another one, going in the fourth one on the first row, and back in there where you just added them. And I'm going to pick up another one and go into the fifth one. And then I'm going to go back in there. And there we have our second row. I'm going to turn that around now. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to pick up a seat bead. I'm going to go into the first one of the second row. And then in the one that I just added, and another one. In the second one, and back into the one I just added, and another one, and you're just gonna do that, continue doing that until your ring band is long enough. You can also do this with three seed beads, five seed beads, you can even do it with four seed beads, but I don't like even numbers on the ring bands, so I'm also, I'm always doing it with either three or five. And why is this your favorite stitch? Because it takes so long, somebody would uh, probably want to know. Well, it's very simple because there's a lot of things you can do with this stitch, but um, in case of these ring bands, I say that they're nice and tight and strong because whatever thread you have left over, you're going to go through that again. So if you see this tutorial for this stitch, you will see people going up and down and up and down um, when they finish a row to make everything uh, look nice and tidy. But we're not going to do that because by the time we get to the end, then we're going to go up and down and up and down. So right now we don't need to do that. And then we're going to just turn that around again and at the next line just continue until your ring band is long enough don't forget you still need to add two seed beads on the side here and two seed beads on the side there so you'll have a little bit of extra space so when your ring band fits make sure that you uh, keep that part in mind and I would say pause me now and start me again when you get there well, my ring band is uh, long enough and you can check that by just putting it over your finger and seeing that there's a little bit of space left um, to add the two seat beads that are going on the side. So I'm going to do two seat beads on the side and I'm going to go into the other round bead pull it and then I'm going to do another two and I'm going to go through the first row oh, 
or the last row, I should say. I'm going to go through there again, those two. The round bead. The two. And the first row. Tight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag my way back. So I'm going into the second row. And be careful that you have all of them. And this is when everything gets straightened out. When you run out of thread, just cut it off. And then you take this one and you also go zigzag through the ring band. And that's all there is to it. And there you go. That's my ring. Uh, as you can see, uh, several times going through the seat beads, everything turned out really nice and even there. So, when I put it on, it feels nice and comfortable. I hope you like it. If you're going to make more of these for yourself, make sure you count the rows so you don't have to fit every time. And you'll just be able to work from there on out. Okay, that's it. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you next tutorial. Bye.